Good evening, welcome to the March 4th, 2019 Board of Selectmen's <coughs> meeting, time being 5.30 p.m. Is there anyone recording the meeting? Anyone else? Thank you. Um, first thing on the agenda is um, 5.30 is signed weekly warrants, which we'll take care of, and executive session, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to the collective bargaining with the town hall clerical union because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position in the public of the public body and this chair does so declare um, I'll enter entertain a motion to go into the executive session I'll make the motion to go into executive session and I'll second motion made and second any discussion on the motion here and none all in favor aye aye Mr. Sullivan aye Mr. Joes yes uh, we will be returning into open session Okay, we're back from executive session. First thing on the agenda is Board of... <laughs> he is actually first thing on the agenda. Um, since the Board of Health official is temporarily disposed... Um, well, we can't do that either. We'll wait for the Board of Health. Be the chief's here for the next day. Yeah, that's why I was going to jump to that, but he's not here. He had it on hold originally, so I want to see what his issue is. I wasn't kidding. It was only going to take five minutes. Chuck didn't uh, get back to me about that either. Did he say he was coming? Was Chuck coming today? Yes, uh, he had an appointment at 5 o'clock, so he might be late. That's fine. Sorry. But he has, nope. doesn't plan, intend on being there. We have a cessation program that you could take advantage of. <laughs> I don't know if we do or not. I know. I started it. <laughs> the, health, the health agent should be on top of the cessation program. <clears throat> Fiscal year 2020 budget. <clears throat> board, we're going to do the Board of Health first. Uh, it's all pretty much me. Just okay. Well, I'm here, just breaks down Board of Health, Transfer oh, yeah, Station, yeah, yeah. Trash, yeah, and Recycling. That's all. Do we have the books so we can look at chapter? They are no, we lost half a day today. We weren't able to finish them. Okay. We're going to have them all. This is my copy. So. Thank you. Oh, you have your from the online? Yeah. Okay. So you're changing. Well, I'll let you explain what you're changing, what you're doing. Let's um, start right at 510 at the top. Okay. That, this is so your copy? You don't have a copy? That was my copy. Um, I have a no, copy. Okay. I can pull it up online. I'm, I'm easy. I'm the way back. So really the only two big changes was, well I'll skip over the uh, health worker part time for now. Um, I want to head down to the health professional in tech, it's on the first page, second one from the bottom. Second one I have is trash printed color trash bags. No, that's the trash. Page seventy two, page seventy four. Page seventy four. Sorry. Seventy four, we don't have seventy four. No, I have eighty one. Uh, we have different page numbers in uh, what which one are you looking at? Health inspection. What department are we in? Five ten? Five ten. Five ten. Thank you. Uh, it's page eighty one, Bob. I got it, thank you. Yeah. All right. Health, health professional and tech. Yep. The <clears throat> it's been budgeted for thirteen hundred. Yes. Increased to forty six. Um, reason is twofold. One is uh, that's for the beach testing. That includes uh, Long Pond. What I am including on that now <coughs> is Asona Bay Shores and Porter Pasture. Right now, conservation's been paying for Porter Pasture to get tested. It didn't make sense in my eyes to have two different <clears throat> departments paying for virtually the same thing. So you'll see when conservation does their budget, they've eliminated the water So they're going to drop that? They're going to drop that. On both? Porta Pasture and Bay Shores? Asona Bay Shores wasn't getting tested. I That's the so. second part to it is we do need to add Asona Bay Shores on as they're technically a semi-private. Well, that's a question. I thought they were limited to membership only. Uh, I get conflicting reports on that. So uh, the way I'm looking at it, just to be safe, is that if I treat it as a semi-private, 
and I test it, and then I'm told that I don't have to, great. But I'm just playing it safe, as opposed to Heavenly Heights, where I, I'm confident that that's private, because that would be a fourth one that would be into question. Really, a Sony Bay Shores, Heavenly Heights are questions. Porter Pasture, Long Pond are not. Those are ours, correct. So I'm playing it safe with a Sony Bay Shores saying that, that I do have to test it. If I'm told I don't, I don't. So that's what that increase is. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll reach out and speak to somebody from the association. I'm actually going to see Debbie tomorrow. Um, I don't know if she's in the association. I know her mother used to be president. So I'll, I'll see what that, the Sona Bay Shores Association was the one. They own the property. I believe it's still closed. They were talking about opening it up, but I don't know if they have or not. Um, it's more about the taxes than anything else. They donated a bunch of land to the town through con to conservation because they don't want to pay taxes on the marshland. And I think that that kind of raised part of the question on it, too. So I'll see what their <laughs> intentions are. Okay. Um, so that number does include it. So if we end up saying... So 4,600 has it is included in all that. And we're going to see a summary de deduction from the planning board sign for the Port of Pasture half of it. Correct. Okay. Yep. I got it. It just didn't make sense to have two different departments paying you know, two for different the same beach thing. testings. I got right. you. Mm -hmm. okay. well, so <clears throat> the health workers, same page. It's the third one down from the top. Okay. Yep. People that increase was based on a proposal to <clears throat> make Lori Desmaras, instead of a per diem employee, more of a part time employee. What's your increase? Uh, right. Yes. Ten thousand. That's an increase or two ten thousand eight hundred. Increase. Mm -hmm. It would be from six thousand. It would go 16, up to sixteen eight. <clears throat> um, okay. The proposal would basically say that Lori would be a four hundred and eighty hour a year employee. Uh, my thought was in the slower seasons, which I'm basically saying is from November until June eight hours a week and then from July to October when we're doing um, a lot of the mosquitoes, ticks, when we have those issues there's a lot of reporting that Lori does. <clears throat> I was thinking more like 12 hours a week during those times. Um, right now she's doing it per diem but she's part of the emergency preparedness team. She does a lot with that. She does a lot with <coughs> reporting. Um, She's already inspecting camps with me because that's part of the camp inspection. It has to be done by a nurse and by me. Um, and she's taken her surf safe, so she could also be helping out. You know, if I have her for eight hours a week, maybe if there's a lot of temporary events, weekend events, she could help out with them. She could help out with smaller retails if needed. Um, so what are we... Sorry. What are we setting her at? Are we calling her? Is she still going to be a town nurse? Is she going to be an assistant health agent? What are we, what are we classifying her as for this? Which we sh we don't have anything right now for it, right? No. Um, so there's a position you're, you're I proposing. I haven't thought about a title change, so I would have to think about that. Um, I was more just thinking along the lines of the hours. Um, I know. Budgeting. I, I, I know what you're saying, but I just want to make sure there's enough in the slow seasons. There's enough for her to do. And you, you, you know she can't go over certain many hours because she's right. not going to be a union person. She's going to be a contract person. We did discuss the hours. It would be on me to make sure that we didn't go over the hours, <laughs> um, which would kind of lead to, instead of saying, all right, you're doing eight hours a week. You're doing eight hours this week, eight hours this week. If, if I had flexibility with her schedule, like a week, like this week, there's no emergency preparedness meeting, not much going on, take this week. I don't need you this week. Now I just saved those eight hours for October or September when there's a lot of reporting going on. There's a lot of tick mosquito issues. Right. Still have to be cognizant of not going over that 19-hour threshold. Right. But it would give me some flexibility that, all right, well, you've done your 12 hours, but you have like another two, three hours worth of work. I can pull some hours in the slow season, put it into the busy season. 
We also discussed the possibility of her doing additional programming like mosquito education, tick education, right. going into the schools, <clears throat> going into the, the seniors. May, may, you know, doing a wellness day here at the COA, things like that. Are you going to be here a little longer because she is somewhere else in personnel too, so we might have to have a discussion about how many hours she's getting elsewhere in the town. Oh, the call fire. Yeah. And, and your hours also. So when the chief gets here, that we might just lump that discussion together and make sure we're we're on the same page with that because we've I've had some discussion time, so. in that about that in the past where we had firefighters and police officers serving together both reserves while well, call guys and I know there was some state issues we even talked about that not recently because of something else that popped up so I don't want to technically she works with a ton of Freetown no matter what department she works for so if she gets over her hours she's she's entitled to overtime she's entitled to those things um, because it's town of Freetown she's working for she doesn't actually work for the fire department or for the Board of Health um, so that's something we have a concern about. Okay. Um, Good point. <clears throat> okay. Um, under the Board of Health, that was really it for my major changes. <clears throat> okay. Actually, for all three of my budgets, that was pretty much it for my major changes. So you're looking for around tw $21,600 increase total for your Board of Health, uh, board of health budget? Uh, the roundly. Two. There are a couple of things that decreased slightly, but not... Yeah, the Do you round know Kim there. pretty much. Is that about? Yeah. With his decreases and stuff, he stays about the same. Yeah, I think it's just up. No, the increase that you said was was about okay. Twenty-one six. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. How about trash? Is that what was next? I don't know what was next. <clears throat> there was an increase on fee disposal. Yeah. Uh, there was an uh, increase just on the contract. And then oh, yeah. the third line down, I asked for a slight increase just because God knows what's going to happen with recycling. So mm -hmm. the last two years we had budgeted 90000 I had <clears throat> asked for 93 just to be on the safe side with, as God knows how recycling is going at this point. So you're figuring what we're currently in the contract for, and we just wrapped that contract for another year, so we have, what, 15 months of that? Yes. The The third line down is more about... Which page the are you on? I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry, you were right. I'm sorry. What, which page are you on? For what, what department? Uh, 433. Three. Third one down, you said? Yeah. Acceptance fees and disposal facility. Yeah. Well, if you look at 2018, it was budgeted for 90,000. They we had finished at 92.1. So I kind of looking at that is where I had said, well, let me, let me just go up just slightly. And then everything else is. So you were just asking for the 93. You were at 92, and you know it's only 800 dollars difference. Right. That's fine. Any questions, Charlie's concerned? No. And that was okay. it there. I'm, I apologize. I didn't ask no, the first no, time. No, 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 no. Feel free to yeah. jump in. I shall. How about um, <coughs> transfer station? Four, three, four. Mm -hmm. I see a CBA number. increase, but that's normal. Um, the, the operator's down because of the switch. Yeah, operator. Transfer station part-time operator is down because Bob retired. We have somebody new that's going to be starting, so that went down a bit. Um, transfer station waste removal disposal at the bottom of the page. Again, I had asked for just a uh, 2,000 increase just to be on the safe side because those numbers keep going up. It's up to the board down the line, but... You could always not carry that and ask for emergency fund transfer if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, or where you have, that's up to, that'll be up to the board. And it's only two thousand dollars, but that's really, that's really about it. Transfer station other supplies I dropped by a thousand <coughs> because we budgeted quite a bit and never spent it, so okay. I dropped it. Um, what number was that? Where were you? The on last it? one on the four thirty four. Last one. Last one four thirty four. Yeah, transfer 
transfer station, station other supplies. Waste removal and disposal is the last one I have. And then, uh, oh, next page. I'm oh, sorry. Last other. one on that page. Transfer station, uh, other supplies. Yeah. That was at 2000 It was at 2000 I dropped it down to 1000 because we had budgeted for the 2000 but never come close to it. So. Yeah, it looks like in 17 you budgeted for, well, not you. The, it was budgeted for 28 It spent 130 It went down 130 It only spent 132 Right. Even 2000 seems a little high, but okay. Well, it's down to yeah, 1000 yeah. down to 1000 okay. And 1000 may be high. If I don't spend it, then I'll drop it again. And that's really about it. Okay. Concerns, questions, comments? I would. Okay. Thank you, Derek. Thank you. Kim, questions, concerns, comments? Um, well, the only question I had um, was actually a decrease that you had on <coughs> the um, trash. Um, you're decreasing on the single stream recycling from 88 down to 57. Yeah, because that was um, when we had asked for the emergency funds because we were paying, that was when we were paying like the $30 a ton and then it blew up on us. This one was figured on that fiscal year for the $100 a ton. So that not, it does look like a huge decrease, but it's when you take into account like where we were at, okay. the 2017 and 2018 numbers were at 28,000 yep. and I'm asking for 57 too. It was, that's showing that increase, but when everything had kind of hit the fan, that's why the, that number was so big. Okay. We had to make that adjustment at town meeting in the fall. Is that the adjustment? No, that's, we already made that adjustment. That was the one that we had done. Oh, previous. the trash <laughs> one, original trash, trash one. one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that number looks way out of whack on <clears> here, <throat> but it's it's factored out correctly. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Kim? All right. What's next here? Where's my agenda. Board of Selectmen. We pushed just because of the snowstorm. There's some things on the agenda that's going to be a little bit out of order um, between travel issues and um, mainly travel issues. But the school was closed today. So the school had asked to come in um, for a couple items. Those have been pushed to the 318 meeting. Both the discuss the lease of the Freetown Elementary School and the um, installation of a new security system. Discuss and approve mixtape event. Um, Fire Chief's not here. Do we know if he's coming? He's supposed to be. Okay. Does he have concerns or questions about that mixtape? I, I know he, he signed off, but. He didn't have the concerns that I actually thought <coughs> he was the one that had concerns about. Well, Chief, if you don't mind, we can start talking about it now and then... Uh... So correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is uh, a number of cyclists are going to be traveling south on Braley Road and uh, going across Chase Road onto Gurney Road. Um, and that, to me, presents uh, an issue. I agree. Um, is this is some type of a race. Um, are they going to stop at that stop sign? Supposed to by law, right? And assuming they do stop at the stop sign, how are they going to get safely across? That? Are, are they all coming through at one time, like a funnel? Are, are they going to be staggered? Where's the event organizer? He's uh, not. Is he uh, coming tonight? He is not. Uh, he had a conflict tonight. I told him I can let him know if any questions we have and if he needs to come before the board. Well, uh, there is questions. That's why the chief had an issue to begin with. And mm -hmm. I, I see his issue because they're crossing the road, mid-road. Mm -hmm. And as you know, if you're heading eastbound on Chase Road, that is sort of a blind spot uh, there. I mean, if it's a ride versus a race, well, a race kind of taints that there's going to be rapid rapid actions where a ride is a leisurely thing that we can have a crossing point or something or a crossing guard or something where... So that would be my concern, that particular intersection. Any idea how many of these races we're having this year? We're up to three like right now, right? I well, mean, the, it seems there, like are, more. there are races that, uh, there are a events ride. that never report. Uh, they just happen. 
There are others that just send a letter notifying us, and then there are others that come before the board. Right now we're at three that's come before. This is the third three, one before yeah. the board. We did the Patriot Half Marathon last time, and we did, I forget what the other one was. Um, but we did two last last week, last meeting. Yeah. Um, but normally it's not an issue, but when the chief has a concern, I'd like to have the concern that may be addressed. Come a you want to have them come in next meeting? Or? Popular area. <coughs> yeah. I think the other one was a half triathlon was the, lot, the other one. <coughs> yes. So um, there's two there. This is number three. And did I read something about another one? Probably. Yeah. Chief, perfect timing. You don't have to come in quietly. We're waiting for you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. We were just discussing the mixtape uh, the mixtape event, which to me sounds like some kind of musical thing they did in the 80s with a yeah. mixtape, but I don't think Journey, a foreigner, is involved at all. <laughs> so I, I explained to the board my concern was the right is coming along uh, south on Railway Road and having to cross through that intersection. If, you know, if it's a race, there's some urgency involved. Also, are they going to be staggered? Are they all coming together? Um, but unfortunately, the uh, the applicant applicant is not here to uh, clarify that. So. Yeah, I apologize, having to come out, Chief. If I knew he wasn't coming, I would have probably just pushed the whole thing till next week. But I mean, we do have a we did have a storm this morning, so you know I, I can see some people are having some sure. issues. I don't know when we knew about it, but this is the first I just heard about yeah. it. So, um, so if you have any other questions you want to put in writing, give them. We can do that so, whole thing, but I'd rather have him come in front of the board. And we'll get we'll get the questions. We'll get them in writing, and then we'll have him come in the next meeting. You come in the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. You're hanging around because uh, Derek. We had discussion with Derek earlier, and I want to have you in down too. Chuck, mm -hmm. discuss and approve change order number two for rehabilitation of two bridge projects with Etna Bridge Company. Um, there's an explanation that Jim Noyes put on that, and quite honestly, um, I tried to get a hold of Jim today to either have him come out here or, or simplify his explanation. So uh, I'm perfectly fine if you just put it off till uh, for another, meeting, you know, another meeting. Well, uh, the last explanation was even worse than this. It was it was all lumped together, and yeah. we had no idea which bridge. We, we actually were talking back and forth trying to figure out which bridge it was actually for. But it looks like there's a little bit from Locust Street still. Yeah, both, both of those projects went out together. Right. The, the bid. And right. So that, that's why it kind of looks, but it's the, the real change order is for the South Main Street Bridge. Didn't we do a change order for the Locust Street Bridge right when it was finishing up? I remember you saying it was like a couple <coughs> thousand dollars difference. You said it wasn't too big of a... Yeah, because we had to pave the, uh, the deck. You know, remember, you remember originally the deck was concrete, and it wasn't up to snuff, so we ended up paving over the top of it, and there was a slight change there. Uh, they ate a good deal of that cost at the bridge did, but um, there was a slight change. Like I said, I'm perfectly fine with getting clarification from GPI on this, and we'll just put it off to another meeting. Yeah, uh, just for those who don't know, I, I've been pushing this South Main Street Bridge for two years now, because we keep getting put off, we keep getting put off. They came right out and did the big job, the Locust Street job, and you were on top of that. But this this other one, we've all reached out to them. We've all tried getting them here to get it. And I don't know if it's just because they think it's small potatoes or what, but... Pretty much that project blew up in their face with the uh, access to the project. You, when you bid a project, though, you should oh, probably get access you're right. and they, work out they, the agreements. They had, they had, shame on them, but they had a verbal approval, and that blew up. <coughs> and then uh, the, the whole... Be watering. Um, who knew a fish didn't know it's going to do a ten foot pipe? How many courses we couldn't do it that way? So that kind of threw a monkey wrench into the works. So I was really hoping to see it done last year. Now we're on the third time around this. So luckily the bridge isn't going anywhere. I know we got some other options now that you know. <coughs> no, but it takes a big storm and then it washes it out again and. Now we're back to where we were originally with this self-healing thing. Mm -hmm. I said, postpone it till uh, Can we find out? Jim come in or, 
or we get a better, uh, a simplified explanation. Can we find out too if um, this is contributed everything time, for the change of Any oil? time on the uh, South Main Street project? It's, it's going to be spring, Charlie. Because uh -huh. you know, well, yeah. now they're talking about doing it with divers. Uh, divers, not right. And uh, again, we don't have any access points, so they're going to <coughs> come up with a barge from Hathaway <coughs> Park daily. Because there's no place for them to set up their operation. Money-wise, supposedly it's supposed to be pretty close because uh, they're saving with the um, not putting the coffer dams in and all that stuff. Um, but you know, I, I'd like to see this a hard number so we can be done with this. And it's already March. Before you know it, the heron will be running again. We'll be excluded from the river. And okay, doesn't seem like we're getting anything done today, Charlie. We're getting put off. Yeah. Remind me not to come to the next meeting. <laughs> uh, well, you're up, Chuck. Discuss and vote on authorized overspending for snow plow and snow removal account. It's only off by 138 bucks, or 380 yeah, bucks, whatever yeah. it is. I think we're in good shape. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Probably in the last week and a half. It's already March. We're going to get more storms now. Uh, we, we probably, just last night, we probably spent 50000 Hopefully the weather's going to calm down a little bit, but after we get all the bills for everything from these last few storms, we're probably close to 200,000. All right, so you're only asking for, the th what's it, 380, I said? No. For tonight, but that's on this agenda? No, all you've got to do is yeah. sign the letter that just allows us to overspend yeah. the $100,000. There's no set dollar amount. Right there. So oh, I thought we had a actually set dollar amount on here. We yeah. Currently, when when that was when that letter was submitted, we were <coughs> three hundred some odd dollars over. But your letter is basically to allow us to spend overspend the hundred thousand dollars that's allocated to this annual. It's something we do every year, Robbie. Oh, I know. There's I know. never been a year I know that I can ever remember that we didn't overspend the budget. Yeah, that's one of the budgets that we're allowed to overspend. I, I, yes. I'm, I'm aware. Current, currently, we've got probably two weeks worth of invoices where subcontractors, sand suppliers, and salt suppliers are not being paid. So um, I think the subcontractors probably, with yesterday's storm, probably have four events that they haven't been paid for. I, I, as I remember, though, you used to come to us, sell it, tell us how much you were over. We would send it to the, the finance committee. We would sign off on it, send it to the finance <coughs> committee. They would approve it, and then it would be sent to Kim. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. they have changed the ruling right. on that with the Modernization Act. You guys just approve. You don't approve a dollar amount. Just to authorize the overspend. overspend. All right. So All right. I'll entertain that motion. All right. I'll make a motion to uh, authorize the overspending of the snow removal account. I'll second that. Motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Thank you, Chuck. Yep. Approve ambulance abatements write-offs for January 2019. We have abatements <coughs> of uh, contractual allowance of $98,493.99. Write-offs for the month of January 2019 is Three thousand nine hundred seventy-nine dollars and eighty-five cents. The smallest number we've ever seen. Total contractual allowances and write-offs: one hundred two thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and eighty-four cents. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, allowances in the total of one hundred two thousand dollars for one hundred two thousand four hundred forty-three dollars and eighty-four cents. Four hundred seventy-three dollars eighty-four cents. I'll second that. Motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Discuss and approve change order dated December 11, 2018 with Com with Pomeroy. The so, so. chair is not here. Um, do you want to speak to it or do you want to uh, put it up until she can speak to it? Uh, well, the, the um, adjustment was uh, uh, an increase because of the <coughs> project uh, in terms of their fees and uh, they proposed an adjustment on their fee of four percent uh, which was an increase of one hundred and one thousand nine hundred dollars 
the building committee met and approved that and it's now here before the board it's incorporated into the budget for uh, the construction of the building and this is all come out of the police station building yeah. budget okay yeah I'm, I'll make uh, the motion that we uh, approve the adjustment I'll second we have motion made and second to approve the adjustment for 101 900 any just further discussion on the motion hearing none all in favor aye aye discuss and discuss and potentially approve we, we now potentially approve things uh, ten, potentially approve regulations of pawn shops so this is a good question what do we do okay why is this before us? Uh, okay so <clears throat> a gentleman uh, came <coughs> through the uh, building the inspector's AWM. office um, and it appeared that he'd be seeking perhaps a PAWN license or and or secondhand furniture so this then uh, triggered an inquiry as to and we don't have any type of uh, uh, memorialized rules or regulations or bylaws <coughs> concerning this um, contact was made with town council who provided uh, us with guidance relative to the PAWN license and basically said that we could not act upon that until we had a bylaw in place uh, substance Subsequent to that, we've learned that the applicant is not going to engage in that type of business, but is going to engage in secondhand furniture, jewelry, things of that nature. So um, I think that we probably should promulgate a bylaw for future use. It's, you know, we'll, be, uh, we'll be proactive in that regard. And I think we could have the board promulgate some regulations concerning secondhand furniture etc <coughs> so that's that's I think that's what we're, we're working today. on at this point we're planning on bringing back to the board uh, some rules and regulations regarding the operation of that type of business so that for example if there's jewelry involved that we uh, have require that the uh, owner of the business take pictures of it if it's an item that has a, uh, a serial ID number on it that it's recorded yeah. So under the statute, there's two separate, <coughs> two separate statutes that pertain to, well, one specifically to pawn shops, yes. P A W N, pawn shops. The other one is more towards resale of secondhand goods. Yes, I think that's <coughs> the uh, junk license. Uh, that junk license, which yeah. the statute is one forty is you know mm. four or five paragraphs, but this would give the board the opportunity to put some flesh to that in terms of uh, <coughs> applicant, is there a fee, um, what uh, uh, records, etc., would be kept, and the hours of operation, things of that nature. The, the applicant did come in today and talk to Jeff. He removed the pawn shop Correct. Uh, portion of the document. We've developed a new application as a result of all of this discussion in terms of listing uh, specifically the types of items that he's intending to sell there so that the board knows when they're voting on the application that uh, these are the items you know inclusive are going to be sold at the shop yeah what he, he mentioned today we talked about uh, the pawn shop um, it was more of the loans um, and that dealt with the interests and, and so on um, he did say that he was not going to he's not advertising it for a pawn shop yeah. he's not going to do the pawn shop he just wants to do this secondhand uh, merchandise for the retail i actually went up and referenced the law and it act, it, that's the main difference between the two is the the uh, loaning of in interest rate setting interest it's rates. not collateralized it, by the item it's collateralized loaning mm -hmm. exactly it, it's not a loaning institution like a bank because they have to bring in certain collateral so it speaks to that it is totally a separate thing yeah um if we're going to work on a bylaw we might want to reach out to the planning board so we can have some zoning bylaws so they can at the same time maybe work on a zoning bylaw so we can know where we're going to put this well i can i can um, i can send a draft to the bylaw to david and then david if you want to reach out to that. kevin on the planning yeah. board and let them know we're working on this if the board wants to take that up that's it's a 
pleasure of the board. But. So, so it, just, Jeff, maybe you can answer, maybe you can't. His, is his uh, interest basically in consignment, or is he purchasing the items and then He's resale? purchasing to sell. To resell. Um, yeah. Uh, what he, his intent is, is obviously like precious metals, mm -hmm. uh, taking that in, and at that point then he would have to work with the police department for the, for, um, is it through the state as well, the, uh, the da database? Well, that's if it's memorialized in, in, a, regulation. in, in a regulation. Right. That's the right intent now, is there's there. Right now, there's nothing. Um, you can bring an old antique chair in. He buys it from you for whatever and sells it for whatever Exactly. Else. Actually, when he came in today and I talked to him about that and I wanted to clarify the differences between the two types of operations, yeah. and he gave me an example. Like he, It's like a game stop for the video games. He, the guy comes in, or a woman, and has a video game they want to get rid of. He says, I'll give you $6 for it. He says, Okay. He then turns around and sells it for ten dollars. That's the type of operation they see. I think we had a similar operation. Is it going on South Main Street? Is it's that where he's? Yes, yeah, South Main. <coughs> by the uh, post office. Yeah, yeah sixty-three. I so think yeah, we right. used to have an operation there down by the bank, um, where Old Juniors was. Um, mm -hmm. That used to take in secondhand used goods and sell on oh, the yeah, internet yeah, and yeah. sell there. Yeah. Uh, I think she was more a consignment. Consignment. Yeah, uh, and she had her own antique. Right, so, like an yeah. antique shop. Yeah. What, what I did mention to him is to give me a, a <coughs> inventory list of things that he wants to buy and sell, um, and things that he is not going to buy and sell. It's just I looked at it that way. So we, if we try to regulate certain things and we forget something, I don't want him coming back and say, "Well, you didn't tell me that I can couldn't do this." Right. So this way, and if he changes anything, he would have to come in front of the board. Well, that's why we included that section in the new application to uh, identify right. specifically what he's. It would have to be something that's also not statutory re restricted, like right. uh, motor vehicles and things like that, where you know so you can't sell more than so many motor vehicles a year, or you're a dealer, and yeah. so there can't be. There's got to be things that are not yeah, strict. It, smoking that was part of it. Uh, paraphernalia, smoking too. guns, that that kind of stuff, alcohol. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so we're gonna work on a. A draft bylaw and we'll have something some regulations for the board. Yes. Beautiful. Just go and give your homework assignment, Chief. I know you're bored of it. <laughs> just running the day to day is just not enough for you. Um, are we all set with that? Everybody's clear? Good? So. Shelley, any questions, concerns? All right, all right. Thank you, Chief. Discuss and approve mass development grant application for real estate service techni technical assistance. Okay. I am. Uh, in the process of putting together a grant application to mass development. Um, as you know, we uh, currently uh, have the free town screw property uh, and uh, we have an, a requirement uh, by mass development to, uh, you know, we made an <coughs> obligation to not only clean up the site but then potentially market it and sell it to a developer for commercial uh, development as well as housing. Um, the my contact at Mass Development pointed out this program uh, and recommended that uh, it be included, as, as, as you all know also, that uh, we recently filed for an extension on the MOA. And she said this would be helpful to us to get technical expertise in terms of this, coordinating the steps that are outlined in the amendment in terms of marketing, to the developers, helping us to prepare the RFP, uh, and you know, doing the selection and, and of of the uh, of the vendor, uh, should we be fortunate enough to get one? Um, <coughs> I tried to call her today just to follow up with uh, with her regarding um, you know what she would estimate the cost would be and what we should apply for. I was unable to get that, but I, I suspect it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of $25,000. Um, the funds will be repaid uh, by the municipality when it eventually disposes of the site. So it's it's an gr outright grant, and then when we sell the property, the funds will be repaid back to mass development so they could be used by other communities. Um, they they recommend a monetary contribution, but under fifty thousand dollars, they don't require it. So at this point, I just wanted to let the board know that I have an intention to uh, apply for this grant and, and apply for it relative to the Freetown School property. 
Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve, it, to authorize David to apply for the Mass Development Grant. Okay, and I will make that motion that uh, we apply for the Mass Development Grant. I'll uh, second okay. motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All, all hearing none. All, all in favor? Aye. All right. <coughs> Sign annual town election warrant to be held on April 1st, 2019. Any questions or concerns with the, the ballot? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to, uh, to sign the annual town election. I'll make the motion that we sign the uh, warrant for the annual town election. I'll second. Motion made and second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved minutes for February 19th, 2019. Charlie, you weren't here, and I don't have a quorum, so we will push those to March 18th. Okay. Town Administrator has a report. I only have a few things. Uh, one is I received notification that I uh, have been approved for state certification as a procurement officer. I got a Congratulations. very Congratulations. fancy uh, diploma, which I intend to hang in my office. <laughs> um, Handwritten, I hope. The whole it was. The, the only problem is they put the wrong middle initial. In there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not it's really the, you. It's well, another gonna, David Demange. <laughs> anyway, so uh, that's that. Uh, I'm thankful to the board for letting me uh, acquire that uh, <clears throat> those skills to uh, help the town. We have our kickoff meeting for our mass uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness grant on uh, Wednesday. We're asking the department heads uh, that we contacted to come in, and it's going to be a two-step process. It's going to basically be an overview presented by Sir Ped, who's administering the grant, and then we're going to have two workshops that are going to follow that for four hours each, and that will uh, help us in the future identify potential areas of vulnerability, but it will also give us the capacity to apply for uh, <coughs> grants relative to uh, the issues that we identify. <coughs> uh, one final thing is I did forward out to the board today uh, an update uh, from uh, Ryan Trahan of Environmental Partners relative to the, uh, the sewer projects and just to let the board know that things are moving along and, and we are uh, on track at this point. And, uh, Does he have an uh, expected date for completion? Uh, he the the date is June thirtieth because that the funds have to be the project has to be done and expended. How was he on time wise though? He, he didn't indicate that uh, I stressed to him about that and he didn't indicate that there was any issue regarding that. He's there's there's a list of things that they've been working on and rather than I figured rather than take a half hour to go through each one individual, I just sent it out today as a uh, a memo to the board. Uh, actually, the emails to the board. Uh, so they can review. If you have any questions at the next meeting, come back to me, and I'd be happy to okay. get answers okay. for you. That's it. Okay, oh, dude, thank you. That was quick. <coughs> so you're a man of your word. Uh, personnel. All right. We'll turn it over to the personnel chair. He is actually here. That's right. <coughs> yeah, bigger than life. Uh, the, the first item is the certification of appointment for Joseph Cavallo for tobacco compliance officer. Uh, through June 30th of 2019. So we, is this for just him or is this for the service? Or? It's for, it, it's for him. He, he's going to be the inspector for the grant. Uh, so this all ties back to that, the tobacco grant that we're part of. And he is going to be the inspector for all the communities in the grant. Now, in the past, we had somebody that hired um, miners to go in and try to buy and do control buys. That'll he's be through be, him. He's going to be doing that as well. He's getting uh, actually trained as we speak on that part of it. So he's going to be handling that as well, too. Okay. That's my question I had. Thank you. Okay. Um, with that, I'll accept the motion. I'll make a motion to appoint Joseph Cavallo as <coughs> tobacco <coughs> compliance officer on effective March 4th, 2019. And I'll second that motion. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing no, no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, the next item is going to be the reappointment of Mary Bowen uh, as to the Board of Registrars effective uh, April 1st of uh, this year. 
I'll make a motion to reappoint Mary Bowen to the Board of Registrars effective <coughs> April 1st, 2019. A ma motion made and seconded. Hearing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> uh, the next item is the change of status for, uh, form for Lori De, um, Damaris. Um, and I think there might be a couple of questions. I do have a couple of questions, if I may, Mr. Chair. <coughs> um, Chief, you're here uh, earlier in the evening. Um, Derek brought up in his budget that he would like um, to budget a position for Lori um, in the Board of Health. Um, my concern is hours and that you two are going to work out or somebody has to work out or figure out, make sure she's not going over <coughs> hours and benefits in that. Um, do you have any concerns or questions or comments about that? How many hours for Board of Health? I'm looking at during our busy season, which would be like July through October 12, and then a week. 12 a week. 12 a week and then eight for the rest of the year, eight a week. I don't anticipate any major issues. I mean, it's because she's a call person. Right. Right. Uh, do you have call person that works stations anymore? <clears throat> if they're EMTs, they can. Not too many do, but they can. I don't. She hasn't got an EMT yet. She's going to go through it. So I don't anticipate any problems, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. You know, the biggest problem would be like if you have storms and they're, and they're doing coverage. Storm storms. coverage, right. That would add up fast, but it's just a myth of iron. Um. Do you know, Chief, if it's a average or if because I'm wondering 20 if it's 20 hours yeah but if you know it's a casual and intermittent service so I'm not sure if it might be an average yeah. well the overtime will be tripped by 40 hours, 40 hours right yeah um, but yeah, yeah the other cumulative effects I, I think of because she's temporary yeah. intermittent I, I don't think right. it is and even you plan on don't plan on using her the same amount every time. It's less in the winter, more in the summer. Right. Um, it I just was, overtime would be a concern. <clears throat> yeah, I, so I, I actually have more concern with the next one. Well, I think the concern came because yeah. we were both coming to uh, to steal Lori. So yeah. Well, <laughs> if he's giving her twelve hours or, yeah. or fifteen hours, and then <clears throat> you have a couple of calls that week, and she responds to a couple of calls, you could be. Or there's a storm coverage. You're gonna go quick, mm -hmm. Kim. Okay. In the back, I recognize you for. Oh. Sorry, I'm I, I'm not recognizing any Charlie. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go ahead, Kim. My, go ahead. Kim. My concern is the call folks only get paid once a month. Isn't that correct? Monthly. So we don't know per oh. payroll per week if there would be an overtime issue until it's already. That was my point. Late. But we track it by the week. So we know how many calls they do. I mean, and and what about pay rates? So are you going to double check to make, how are you guys going to coordinate, because we can't coordinate it for you. Right, but I, well, we would know it's by the calls. I mean. Yeah, but you're going to know how much he's doing. So you would have to. Right, but he's not, he's at 12 and doing the height of No. <clears throat> yeah, yes and no. Yes and no, because my plan is like a week like this where then I don't have much going on. There's mm -hmm. no meetings, no EP meetings. I may say, all right, Lori, I don't need you this week, and now take those eight hours and say, like, in September when we got a lot of mosquito tick issues, to, all right, let me take some of these eight hours, put them here. So instead of her doing 12, maybe she's doing 13, 14, 15. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't anticipate, unless we have a, a, a major storm hurricane or, or something. A hurricane, I thought it was storm coverage, and we had that. Anyway, near 40 hours. The other concern and question I have is can she pay two different rates of pay in the same town? I believe so. So she can make one rate of pay at one place and another rate of pay at another place? Yeah. Okay. So. The, the overtime, though, can correct it. Be it be. Be it'd have to be in the aggregate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. well we remember when there was a bunch of guys that were on the call department and uh, reserve officers. <clears throat> back in the 90s, and they all had to get w pick one because they couldn't do both. Um, we used to pay them as, well, the police department got paid this, and the fire department got paid that, and J uh, not JMLC, the other one. Um, FS, FS, FLSA, FSA yeah. said no, that doesn't work that way. So It, it would just have to be between myself, Chief, and Lori. To make sure <coughs> I that mean, really, it's going to be Lori should be able to figure out how many hours yeah. she's working and, and know, but... Right. 
you guys are the department heads, so I just want to make sure you're up to speed on that. If it becomes a problem, just get us now. That doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I'll make a motion to sign the change the status form for Lori Desmarais, call firefighter effective March 1st, 2019. Okay, nation made, motion made. Uh, hearing no further. Are you going to second that motion? I will. I will. Jeez. All right, I'll second it. All right, there we go. And then uh, the motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next one, also for change of status form, will call firefighter Samantha Cardin. This is the one I had. I'm more concerned because she's a part time dispatcher, also. Mm -hmm. How many hours should, is she getting from? from I think there? she only get one shift up. I think at the most. But again, with, with, yes. with vacation days, or somebody get they got about sick, she could get more. So that's something we have to keep. She mean keep out of it. Is uh, that her yeah. primary source of income, or does she have another job? I, don't, I think she's another job. Okay. <clears throat> if that changes though, and she becomes a full time dispatcher or something like that. She has to get the fire department. Yeah. We had that was, issue with the law, with Lisa when Lisa Podowski first mm -hmm. was splitting hours and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you've spoken to her. You made her aware of the situation. What her, your concerns are? Yeah, I think she actually wants to pursue a career in, in the fire service. So, well, her father was a deputy chief, so I can see that. Okay, okay. I'll make the motion to appoint. Oh, not appoint. I'm sorry. Sign the change of status form for Sarah uh, Samantha Carden. Call, call for firefighter effective March 1st, 2019. I'll second that motion. Any discussion on the motion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, new business. Dates of upcoming Board of Selectmen meeting. So, Kim in the back. Who's going to do James Riley? Um, James Riley is going to be put off to the next meeting. Oh, okay. Um, okay. There was a question about that, so we just figured we'll just put it off to the next meeting so we can... <coughs> Make sure everything's all set. Thank you. Um, new business states of upcoming Board of Selectmen's meeting Monday, March 18th. And I'm not going to read the rest because I don't really care. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, April 2nd. Tuesday, April Whoa. 16th. Monday, May 6th. <laughs> and Monday, May 20th. Executive session. Any other questions? Anything other concerns that are duly before the board? Hearing none, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, we do not have a quorum to go into Excel Recycling, so we will not be going to Excel Recycling um, because we don't have a quorum to do so. So that being said, I'll entertain a motion to oh, adjourn. Make the motion to we adjourn. Second. Motion made Aye. and seconded to adjourn. Aye. 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 A